So gracious Jesus, the wonder of all the truths that we've been singing about, the wonder of your life, your serving, your birth into this world. And so Jesus, we'd ask that you'd continue to be present with us as we walk with you, as we follow you. Thank you once again for giving us so many uh, abundant gifts over uh, a big Thanksgiving, uh, this big weekend, and uh, some of the shopping probably that's been done. Uh, but Jesus, we would ask that you'd continue to help us to follow you because you give us gifts of the heart and gifts for the soul. So thank you for your true body, your true blood. May it strengthen us. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. So uh, we're starting a new series uh, that will run through uh, Christmas. And again, most of you will know that Christmas Day is a Sunday this year. And uh, that means uh, New Year's Day is also a Sunday. So we're looking forward to uh, celebrating Jesus in all kinds of ways as we go through these next number of weeks. So um, uh, the theme for Wednesday night's Advent concert is A Christmas to Believe in. It's a song by Matthew West. And um, so we're going to uh, be singing lots of Christmas music uh, Wednesday night. We've already been hearing Christmas music, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Uh, the, this uh, question, um, what is it about Christmas music? But at the end of the message today, I'm going to ask a personal question about money. And so I know you're really excited about that, but uh, again, just want to give you a heads up. So in case you want to leave now, you could uh, get up and sneak out. Maybe not right now, but in a few minutes you could uh, do that. But I'm going to ask a personal question about money because, um, well, what is it about Christmas music? Uh, Silent Night, Holy Night, when we sing it, when the world sings it, it's been sung for hundreds of years. When we sing Silent Night, Holy Night, it does little to alleviate hunger, even though it's been sung for well over a century now. When we sing uh, Joy to the World, it does little to cure cancer. When we sing Hark the Herald Angels, it does not bring a departed loved one back. Even though we sing in that song, born that man no more may die. But people still die. When we sing away in a manger, it does not restore the innocence of childhood. Although one of the treasures that I have is a little cassette tape from when our oldest daughter was two years old and we got her to sing away in the manger. She's no longer a child and her innocence of childhood has long been gone. Even when we uh, listen to a TSO style, Trans-Siberian Orchestra style of Carol of the Bells, it does little to bring sobriety to a dad or to a mom. And when we sing O Little Town of Bethlehem, it does little to address the refugee crisis that probably most days and weeks we don't even think about, even though this refugee crisis is not all that far away from where Bethlehem is located in our world. So even posing these kind of uh, questions and talking about Christmas music in this kind of way, can we yet even imagine a Christmas without the music of Christmas? I don't think we can. I know I can't. And why is that? Even, even though all these things I just said are, are true, and that way, you know, we still have all these uh, calamities and um, things that... Uh, make our living, our life sometimes very, very hard. But why is it? It's because in all the Christmas music, all the words, there's hope. Even knowing all those truths, there's still hope. Somehow uh, Christmas music brings hope that hunger one day 
will be no more. And again, hope that it's addressed over and over and over again. If you were with us in Common Ground in, uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, my mind doesn't, uh, we watched this uh, talk by Melinda Gates of how the Gates Foundation and uh, the other uh, entities in the church, the Big C Church, has uh, cut hunger in half around the world over the last 25 years. So there's hope in that. Uh, when it comes to cancer, when it comes to this death, when it comes to the innocence of childhood, to sobriety, when it comes to this refugee crisis, so we have hope that these things are being addressed. And one day, again, there's hope that these things will not be in our world. And not only that they won't be in our world, they won't be in our lives. Because all of us face some of these things. So this morning, I want us to once again think about this whole idea that there is big hope because we know a big Christ and we're going to celebrate once again a big Christmas and we're going to do it with big music. I think it's just the music is big, but because the, the music is big, it's because of the big Christ. One of the uh, newer Christmas songs and oftentimes a very favorite Christmas song of many asks a number of questions. The title of the song is, Mary, Did You Know? Mary, Did You Know? And these questions are just, I just just find these questions, they're they're questions of the heart. So the writers of this song, the creators of this song, ask this question, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? And we know that story. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? And it's true. Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? Oh, the wonder of that. And I love this line. This child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Could you take all that in? goes on, another verse says, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Oh, the hope. There's someone that walked on our earth that could do that sort of miracle. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand? And it happened. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And again, what a line this is. And when you kiss your little baby, you've kissed the face of God. And I just know that Mary kissed her little baby boy like all parents. Kissed their little babies, their baby boys and their baby girls. And then it just says, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Then this chorus, the blind will see, the deaf will hear, and the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. In one more verse, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is the Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb. And the last line, this sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Mary, did you know? In Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 26, we hear these words from God's inspired word. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. 
since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. And the Lord's servant, Mary, answered, May it be to me as you have said. And the angel left her. So that prompts me to ask this question, for us to ask this question. Mary, did you know how big? Did you know how big? And most Bible scholars uh, tell us that Mary was probably a teenage girl, 14, 15, maybe 16. Again, back in those days, you were pledged to be married quite early. Life expectancy was nowhere near what it is these days. So she's just this young little girl. More than likely, Mary did not know how to read or write doesn't mean that she was less smart than any of us sitting in this room this morning. So did she know how big? Could she have any idea how big? Yet in the gospel, again, as you read these words in Luke chapter 1, Bible scholars will tell us that somehow um, there is a hope in Mary then again, there is a big hope in Mary, and it's going to get a whole lot bigger over the next number of years, especially over the next nine months. But not only is the big hope in Mary going to get bigger, Mary in the big hope. Mary in the big hope is what she's being drawn into. The wonder of this story that, uh, again, even as we hear it today, and we've heard it so many times before, it will still grow and get bigger in each one of us. So I want to take it, take it this, on this Sunday morning, this first Sunday of Advent, to talk about there is big hope for you. There's big hope for you. There's big hope in you. And again, what makes the wonder of our story is that we, you are in big hope. The, the wonder of how this all works, this, this hope. Again, if we continue to be like a lot of people around us, that we just have hope that we're going to be well-fed. We got hope in this uh, system that we call America. We have hope in the government. We have hope in that, you know, just the things that are going to continue to be like they've always been. If we have hope in that, it's a real small hope, and it's a shriveling, shrinking kind of hope. But when we have this hope in God, when we have this hope in Christ, when we have hope in Christmas, when we have hope in the big C church, well, that just gets bigger. There's no way that that can shrink. God won't have it. It just keeps getting bigger. So again, asking ourselves this question, do we know how big? Do we know how big? How big Christ is, how big Christmas is, how big the church is, how big this kingdom is. We follow a big Christ. And Christmas is much bigger. Christmas is much bigger than what happened on Black Friday and what will happen in the next four weeks before we get to the day of Christmas. Christmas is much bigger than all the Christmas carols put together. But they all point to it. Every year, it's big Christ, big Christmas, big hope in you, big hope for you, hope in Christ, not in all the other things around it. Hope in Christ. 
So this big Christ, this big Christmas, this big church, this big kingdom, and I'm just overwhelmed because it's not even the 1st of December yet. And he's already been so big. So uh, last week, we had all kinds of shoeboxes out there in the entryway. And then our core middle school students and our Crave middle school students packed a couple hundred more. And so uh, it ended up that 671 Christmas shoeboxes, all filled with hope, left our building and are making their way around the world. That's 200 more than last year. Yeah. And those 671 shoeboxes joined together with many millions more. And every box filled with hope. Christ is bigger. And then we announced that the Advent concert is sold out, but it's sold out with hope. Because we're praying that hope will be in that building before we even get there. And when we're there, and when we leave, hope is always with us. So I promised last week that I'd share a couple of Advent concert stories. This year, the theme that uh, has been uh, for this um, Advent concert is just that we'd keep Christ in Christmas. When the, the partnership with the YMCA started to happen, we just, there, there was that, they, they already had that theme before we even had that first meeting. And so we thought, we can work with that. Keep Christ in Christmas. That's what we want this Advent concert to be about. What's what it's always been about. And that Advent concert, Keep Christ in Christmas, well, it's not hard because we know a big Christ. We know a big Christmas. We know a big hope. And the second thing, the second thing was serve a need in our local community. Serve a need in our local community. So over the last couple of years, we just, we've been uh, um, uh, having these partnerships we want these partnerships because they provide hope for souls that matter. They provide hope for souls that matter. So last year, as you know, when we were over at Pickett Auditorium, we uh, partnered with the Salvation Army so that um, their funding could continue to go and get bigger and so they can serve the needs. And as we were you know, going through last year, I had, ended up having a conversation with my mother and some of you know, I, um, I, I, my mother was a single mother for a while in, in my childhood. And she happened to say, oh yeah, one of the Christmases, uh, the gifts that you received were from the Salvation Army. And so uh, long before I knew, I had this little Christmas hope from gifts that were provided by the Salvation Army. And all these years later, there's this partnership with the Salvation Army so that children like me in single-parent homes and poor families would be able to have Christmas gifts in the name of Christ. This year, many of you know, we've been partnering with the YMCA, and they have this program that they call the Working Poor. Uh, many of these families, their, their mom and the dad are working, but they haven't enough money to provide uh, adequate care for their children. So the YMCA has this before school care, this after school care uh, programs for these children to uh, go to. And so uh, um, we've been partnering with the YMCA. And we're hoping that through the sponsorships that have been going out into the community that uh, about $50,000 will go towards the working poor. So let me just uh, clear up something that maybe uh, is uh, misunderstood. Some of you will look at our bulletin and see that we were kind of uh, behind. Uh, no monies. We don't, we don't um, in, in one sense, uh, there, there's no money that goes out of New Hope for the Advent concert. There's no money that comes into, the, into New Hope from the Advent concert because we want it to go out and serve the community. So our volunteers, they give a lot of their time and their energy and their effort uh, but we've gotten the, 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 to be able to play in the PAC was a uh, pretty good ticket, but we got sponsors for that and all these other sponsors that are going to give so that they can go to this Working Poor Fund. It's a partnership. Well, New Hope Benefit, oh, yeah, we're going to benefit. Much more than just finances. Uh, because, again, I, I like that idea that it doesn't cost us anything financially, 
we're not going to gain anything from it. I, I kind of even like that because I want our church to be a big C church and serve the needs in our local community. Do you agree with that? I hope you do. So I got to tell uh, one sponsor story. Uh, a couple weeks ago, in one of these meetings where they said, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what it's all about. Um, and, and uh, you know, would you uh, like to be a sponsor? And we've got these tiered, I don't even know how it all works. You know, those are details. I don't do details. Uh, but other people are doing wonderful details in that. So we got like a $10,000 level sponsorship of 5000 or 2500 1000 And so they've, they've gone out to all these uh, different sponsors in that. Um, and uh, this sponsor said, yeah, we'll sign up for a $10,000 level sponsorship. Again, that money will just go to this working poor fund. And then they said this without being asked, and we'll give $10,000 every year for as long as this concert goes. That's what I, that's what I said. Wow, how'd that happen? And then I remembered, oh yeah, we follow a big Christ. And Christmas is much bigger than we can even imagine. And so uh, as we head towards Wednesday night, we're praying hope for all, praying big hope for all. Uh, hope for every heart. Sometimes there's going to be tears of hope. There's going to be laughter with hope. Oohs and ahs with hope. Rock is celebrating, jumping to our feet with hope. Hooting and hollering with hope. Clapping hands, thankful and full of hope. The hope of Jesus, hope of Jesus for you. The hope of Jesus in you, you in this hope. Big Jesus hope, big Christmas hope, big Jesus hope, big Christmas hope. In Lamentations 3, it says this, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. That is a verse of hope. And there's this hope that just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Big hope, big hope, big hope for you. At New Hope and Through New Hope, big hope for you. At here, here at New Hope and then through New Hope, big hope for you. I want to finish with these applications. Big Bible hope. Again, 15 minutes of hope every day of Advent. 15 minutes of hope every day of Advent sitting with your Bible. And maybe th this Bible verse would inspire you to start doing that. And it came to pass. Joseph. Bethlehem. Mary. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Where else in all this big world is there that kind of hope? Fifteen minutes in a chair with God's big word of hope. We've got a big church family hope. Again, we talk about this idea that we're chosen, holy, and dearly loved. There's a warm family waiting for you. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus this holy family. And in this holy family, there's big hope with them and in them and through them. And it's the same for our New Hope, New Hope Christian School family. Big hope. Big hope, family. Big hope as we worship together. Big hope in praying together. Big hope in serving together. Big hope in giving to together. And the last thing, Big hope giving. Because there is big hope in Christ. Here's the personal question that I talked about. How many of you, I know some of you are in this room, and this won't be a thing of pride, it's going to be a thing of being very, very thankful that you're a part of this group. How many of you would say that maybe for about the last five years or longer, for the last five years or longer, You've been someone who's been tithing. You give 10%. I know some of you, and raise your hand high. This isn't a pride thing. How many of you that have your hand raised have lost hope in these last number of years? How many of you would say that your hope has grown larger? There's some of you or no tithe, and you're not raising your hands. Our hope will not shrink as we follow a big.
Christ. And so maybe, maybe it'll be at this time of year that many of us will continue to take another step and do something big for your heart. And as you do something big for your heart, big hope will grow. Let's stand, let's pray. Let's sing one more song. So Jesus, you are big. You've been showing yourself big here at New Hope. You've been showing yourself big all in, in all kinds of other churches around our valley, around our state, around our nation, and around our world. We know that as we go into the PAC on Wednesday night, it's really, really big. But it's also so little. A couple thousand people. And how many millions and billions of people are there in this world that need hope? How many people outside of the PAC on Wednesday night will still need hope? And there are so many people that know that hope and are in that hope and that hope is in them. And so your church continues to thrive and offer hope, offer hope. Here at New Hope, that is our prayer. That you help us to get bigger and bigger in offering hope. We sing it, we pray it, we read your word, and we believe, we serve, and we give Jesus. Big hope, big hope in you. We pray these things in your name. Amen.